Hey, what's going on guys, and welcome to another episode of Mark My Words, where I am Mark, and these are my words. And today we're talking about a magnificent subject today, cooking. Yes, one of my favourite things. Food and video games are really on the top list. And who better to discuss this with than a fellow foodie? It's my absolute pleasure to give a Mark My Words welcome to Lawrence Schrader. How are you doing, bud? Uh, Mark, how are you doing, fella? Hey, thank you so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it, especially with short notice and everything. So thank you so much. So you're quite the foodie yourself, aren't you, Lawrence? Well, I'd like to think so, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I've seen you cook th- up a storm in my kitchen in uni, so I, I, I kind of know what you're about. Like, <laughs> What better to start a story than at the beginning? So how did you get into cooking and who influenced you? Oh, um, to be honest, Mark, I think it started when I was very young. Uh, my parents had a business which uh, revolved around the buying and selling of property in France. Uh, and as a result, they frequented France a lot uh, on business as well as going on uh, to their own places for holidays. And sometimes it just wasn't possible for me to be looked after by someone. So I ended up being uh, taken with them. Um I've got no recollection of this, but I've been told I was about six months when I first we went with them. So um, I don't remember a lot, obviously, but so I've been told I was six months when I went they with spoon them. They spoon-feed you foie gras uh, now. It's <laughs> <laughs> not far off. Um, and naturally, I was exposed to, you know, the culture and the traditions of the country since a young age. And, of course, one of the things that the French are most renowned for uh, is their food. Um, and so I think um, that's also where my father got his influences from as well. And uh, so as the main cook of the house, uh, that love and appreciation of food and those influences got brought back and carried on into our home life, uh, as well as being enjoyed when we were on the continent. When I was a little older, I not only used, was used to eating it, but I also started to enjoy it and appreciate it more. And I wanted to learn about it. Of course, I got to experience other cuisines as well, you know, either through travel or dining out here. But um, I think that initial passion, Mark, the um, the mother influence, if you like, was actually from France. You know, I enjoyed watching my dad cook. Sometimes I'd offer to help. Um, but the, the thing with my dad is, I, I don't know what it is. He he gets very territorial about the kitchen. So he, if he didn't want you to do anything, you know, he, he didn't want he just wants you to be good and quiet and, you know, out of the way. Uh, so sometimes getting involved was, you know, easier said than done. Uh, sometimes you literally had to turf him out the kitchen uh, and say, look, you know, you sit down, relax, and I will do the cooking. And occasionally he'd agree. <laughs> yeah, I had a similar situation, right, when um, my dad used to do a lot of cooking when I was a kid, right? And he'd always do cheese potato pie. That's one of the staple dishes. We literally lived off that and corned beef. So anything corned beef related we ate. But uh to help him out, he'd give me a block of cheese and a cheese grater and a plate. And he went, right, great, all that. So I'd be there like, trying to get through. All that. So I enjoyed that part of it. Like the... Yeah, well, that's, that's, all, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's that's how you start, you know, young children out. You say, oh, can you grate the cheese? Oh, can you can you chop this? Can you peel this? And uh, that, that's how it starts, isn't it, I suppose? Yeah, you try to give him something that won't kill him in like a second. So it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> right, this is the most non-lethal thing you can ever do. So go on. <laughs> Even if it's just like massaging dough or lick the spoon on the mixing bowl. like <laughs> Always always give your kids uh, the uh, spoon to, uh, lick, uh, to lick afterwards because it'll, it'll encourage them into cooking later, I think. Yeah, I'm finding that with my niece at the moment. Like uh, she does a lot of baking with my dad. She's the reason I'm still overweight now because she's encouraged. D- Bampy, can you make some brownies? Bampy, can you make some... I've never had so much contempt for an eight-year-old in my life. <laughs> you love it, really. Take the baby. Okay, up in the ante now, Lawrence. What's the most technical dish you've ever cooked? Oh, wow. Um, I did attempt a, uh, a melting chocolate bomb once. That was quite interesting. Um, you know, the one which is it's the, basically the chocolate sphere and you've got to then pour on the uh, the hot sort of dessert liquid and it sort of just melts around and it reveals, you know, the, the stuff inside. Oh, okay. It mainly went right, actually. There was just only one of them. Fortunately, I, I thought something this, like this would happen, so I had a spare at hand. But um, uh, basically, you, you, you painted the balloons with the chocolate. You know, you have to fill up uh, air with some balloons and, you know, paint it around with chocolate and then you let it set and then you deflate the balloons up afterwards so you're just left with the uh, the chocolate shell 
I think one of them I probably uh, left uh, painted a bit too thin, basically. And so when I tried to uh, deflate the balloon, the balloon, well, I didn't deflate it, pop more than anything. It shattered the shell, the chocolate shell around it. I can imagine that uh, being a bit soul destroying. <laughs> it was. Fortunately, I, I knew something like that would happen, so I, I had another one, um, you know, a, a backup, a spare one, you know. So I think there was, uh, uh, I was doing it for four, and I, I, I had actually prepared five, so just in case something like that happens. Oh, so lucky intuition. Yeah, that's the thing with cooking, you know? like you have to kind of expect it to fuck up, in a way, you know, like uh, you got to have a contingency. Unless yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter how good your confidence is. It's always, you know, good to keep in mind something may go wrong. So have a backup plan or you know have something which you a go to which you can you know save yourself with there's two dishes that me and my dad have been doing during lockdown right we did uh, two types of souffles so we did one chocolate souffle and we also did a vanilla one well we started with the chocolate one and it kind of riz a bit but it didn't that well i think um i think we got the um we didn't get as much air in it or something like that and but the vanilla one rose up fine. All you needed to do is not put it too high in the oven because uh, the top bit was a bit charred a bit, but it was it was still lovely. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing with souffles. I mean, they are they are a sod for going wrong, even if you're confident in your technical ability. I mean, you know, if you ever watch MasterChef and uh, one of the contestants says, oh, I'm, I'm going to do a souffle, you know, the presenters themselves, they will say, you are taking a risk. They, uh, yeah. they are they are sod for not rising even if you think you've got the temperature and the ingredients and the uh portions correct they can still not rise sometimes you know they are renowned i wouldn't last 10 seconds on master chef because i like to take my time doing stuff i don't i don't like to do anything at a clock i'd suck as a line cook as well because uh do you know how long i give myself when i'm doing like spaghetti and meatballs or something like that like i'm literally there rolling it like an hour in advance just so I can, I got everything in a neat line, everything sorted. The the pans got the oil in, ready to go. <laughs> and there's just me going. <laughs> oh, massive thing. I mean, that's I wouldn't go on Master Chef, and for that reason, I probably wouldn't want to be a professional chef either, because it's all time pressure, and I, I wouldn't like that either. I'd end up doing simple dishes, but intentionally making them bad. Say now they go, what have you got? Uh, cheese on toast with a twist. Where's the cheese? I went. That's the twist. <laughs> If I went on Hell's Kitchen with Gordon Ramsay, I think he'd hit me with a plate. Probably <laughs> would. <laughs> Moving right along, this one is for beginners, right? So, what would you say are staple dishes for people to start off with? I think you can't go wrong with a spag bol. Spaghetti bolognese. I mean, literally, it is. It's so hard to get wrong because uh, this. It's down to interpretation most time. I mean, you've got so much license to play around with it um you know as much as you want i mean there is literally no recipe as far as i'm concerned that, that that's the beauty of it mm. um you know it's made by university students up and down the country uh, i'd say it's a it's a great one to get your confidence up um i mean like i'd like to start you know just by sweating some onions and garlic in a pan of oil but you know just give it a bit of lift but even that's not you know compulsory i mean Mm. then you could just go down your own road i mean you can use tin tomatoes fresh tomatoes tomato puree you've got freedom over the spice and herbs you use i mean you can use what oregano basil um herbs de provence Uh, um i like to add a glass of red to it because i feel it gives the mint a bit more of a depth but again yeah. that's completely just you've got complete you know license over it you know it's, it's it's completely there's no recipe that's what i like about the dish and the longer you let it simmer for the better it tastes as well so you've just got all these rich flavors just coming together isn't it yeah 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 absolutely no you are you are right yeah it soaks, it soaks up all the, the flavors uh you know have, have you ever like um, made a stew or a curry and it tastes even better the next day because it's left to marinade longer hmm. yeah i did a beef stew before i had, had red wine and everything i think i simmered it for like six hours literally the beef just fell apart and i browned it off before i did it i was like i just thought heaven absolute heaven the only thing i forgot to make really was dumplings i think you can't have a, a beef stew without dumplings it's a law What's the biggest fuck up you've ever done cooking wise, like when you were starting out? I've had a few. Um, I think I'm going to go with. I think I'm going to go with one of my home economics exams in school. 
Oh, what happened? It's trying to make creme brulee, a lavender creme brulee. Um, it was going very well up until the point where I got the blow torch out. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know what happened, but honestly, I, I've got no idea what happened. But either I'd, um, you know, I'd not actually, you know, lit the flame quick enough and there's too much gas coming out or myself or someone else had left some gas running in the kitchen. Uh, I don't know, but literally, I, 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 you know, fired it and I lit the flame and there was this big almighty bang. Uh, you know, there's this huge explosion uh, which which shook the entire kitchen. And I can remember sort of, you know, flinching naturally as you would, you, you know, you sort of jump like that. And I knocked my creme brulee on the floor and uh, my creme brulee was now a puddle on the floor. And uh, the home ec teacher, you know, she's looking very formal. She's got her glasses down like this and she's got her clipboard and she's coming to, she's coming to uh, you know, look round like that at the creme brulee that's on the floor. And I'm just stood there like, na na. <laughs> right, do you want a taste, Alan? <laughs> I think we're going to need a creme brulee over here, Professor. <laughs> it was pretty much that, yeah. So yeah, I, was, I was just sort of like, that's the end product. And she just, just looked really unamused. And she was like, I just walked off. <laughs> I think I got a D for that exam. Uh, so th the thing is, I was in B's for the rest of it. So I pulled my grade down. <laughs> uh, that's the thing with school and teachers. They're a pain in the ass sometimes. Like, I actually used to refuse to cook to annoy my cooking teacher. Like, you refused uh, to cook? Yeah, uh, it was because she was always having a go. She always had a bit of an attitude problem, and I thought, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick it to you and uh, not do anything for you. And to be honest, she was always getting us to make stuff that I wasn't even gonna eat. So I'd be cooking things to waste. I wasn't big on quiche growing up. I was like, she went tough. You cook what I tell you. I said, I'm not cooking it. <laughs> not cooking a quiche. No. Nope. Quiche. <laughs> yes. Everyone right for quiche. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't all right for quiche that day. <laughs> Not that day. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This is going to be your personal opinion on a celebrity chef. Like, who would be your favourite and why? That is the mother of all tough questions, I think. Um... I've got so many which I like. I've got so many which I don't like as well. Um, let's say it's all down to personal taste. I mean, I like Gordon Ramsay. Um, I also like Marco Pierre White. Uh, I understand as well that they are also people which uh, a lot of others don't like. Yeah, they're known for having certain attitudes, aren't they? Yeah, their persona. But, I mean, in terms of their technical ability, I mean, they're as good as anybody else's. I mean, I think they've both got three Michelin stars. So technical wise, achievement wise, they're as good as anybody else, but it's just a case of whether you can stomach their personality or not. I mean, I've, I've, I think they're all right, personally. Service and standards are far more important than some fucking bimbo. I, yeah, I find with Marco, like he was very fiery in his youth and then he mellowed with age. And I think we've got the similar thing with Gordon as well. Yeah, well, don't forget Marco trained Gordon, didn't he? So um, yeah. yeah, probably some of rubbed off on him i mean he's um uh yeah you are absolutely right it, 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 he, he did mellow with age i saw an interview with him i think he was um i'm not sure it was somewhere in london i think and he did a you know an interview and a, a q a afterwards uh, uh about his life yeah he, he, he has mellowed a lot he, he's not the same uh bloke who you saw in his 20s you know in his kitchen shouting and screaming mm. um yeah, so he's an interesting bloke, Marco. He's very, you, you just don't know where you stand with him, do you? Yeah, you expect him to like smash something, throw something or something like that, like with Gordon. But with Marco, I find everything's a bit more professional with him. Like he says what he needs to say in the kitchen. And if you don't answer him, he'll just keep repeating it until you answer, which is great. He goes, how long, how long, how long, how long, how long? I'm like, okay, in a minute, Marco, okay. <laughs> just stop talking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> when he gives credit when it's due it you know you know he really means it because i think i watched an episode of uh master chef the professionals australia so it was him and matt preston judging 
And one guy actually didn't have the ingredients for like a horseradish for his beef dish. So he kind of made like a substitute. Marco loves, he likes rustic classic dishes, doesn't he? And and he said, I, he, he actually complimented like mad on the fake horseradish because he was like, I said, if I didn't know that was fake, I wouldn't have picked up on it at all. I'd say, if you didn't tell me, I would have known the difference. So great job on that. Yeah, he's, I think they're all right, really. I mean, I think, um, I think their, their fire and their passion is, it just comes from a love of food. And I think they want you to get it right. Yeah, because that's one thing Gordon learnt, wasn't it? Like, yeah, the standard has to be there. Nothing gets past the hot plate unless the stand that is required is met there like that way you know you're treating your customers with respect and you're not giving them shit food exactly yeah that's time across the board isn't it because i always look at like different dishes and stuff like that like uh, i've watched a couple like a couple of heston blumenthal's kind of stuff like i like how ambitious he is but when but i like his takes on classics as well that like i think um for one um, fish and chips dish, like uh, I think he filleted his own fish at the time. It wasn't already pre-done. He, you know, just to keep the moisture in with the fish, like he he done it himself. And I thought that was very good on him. Like, so he's not just a mad scientist. Like he just he knows flavors as well. Like, yeah, he's, he he does like a lot of you know, trendy sort of modern takes. Like he does a lot of deconstructions, doesn't he? So if you want, if he as a dessert called strawberry shortcake it'll be some sort of homemade strawberry compote some sort of brittle and you know biscuit crumble and then perhaps some sort of panna cotta or something like that next to it you know it's like a deconstruction sort of thing that's quite popular um but he also does things backwards doesn't he i think i'm pretty certain it was heston blumenthal who had a, a menu where your starter was your dessert and your dessert was your starter like um he'd do um for example, he might do boiled egg with soldiers for the dessert, but the boiled egg was like a fondant egg and like the strips of bread were like bread pudding or something like that. And you had the crack back black up. Um, yeah. Say that again. Um, it was like the uh, the pep, cracked black pepper was like shards of chocolate, you know, so it's, it's quite interesting how he does things like that. It's kind of good that food actually makes people this creative and ambitious with it. <clears throat> like especially especially like with his use of like liquid nitrogen and stuff like that like you know he's using some dangerous shit to create food like it's like nuts it is bonkers it is absolutely yeah time to get things a bit hotter i don't know why i'm rubbing my hands on this episode i I never usually do it usually i'm like this and like that but (laughs) a lot of the time so i think you need a cat on the lap you need a cat on your lap (laughs) Uh, I'll start purring myself now. I'm just going to purr, purr, purr. <laughs> so, come dine with me challenge, right? Here's the things, right? So you've got to pick a theme, and you've got to pick a starter, main, dessert, and a form of entertainment. What would you pick, and why? Like, if you really wanted to impress. Um, I'd go for... Probably French, probably French. Um, uh, I'd probably do uh, something like something. I'd probably do a chicken ballotine as the main course, uh, which is basically boned and rolled chicken thigh with, um, you know, I think it's like sausage meat, uh, minced chicken as well. Uh, you know, it's rolled up in the um, cling film. It's boiled for twenty minutes in the saucepan, and then you finish it off in the pan and brown it. It's very nice. Um, probably because a well, everyone I've ever cooked for loves it, and also the thing with chicken and as well pork is it, it's cooked one way. You know, if you if you if you're faffing around, you know, with steaks and stuff, some person wants it rare, some person wants it blue, some person wants it well done. You know, dinner parties are stressful enough without you having to fanny around with all that. So I think I'd probably stick with that as my main course. Um, Maybe a chocolate mousse or a Dolce Tyranese for dessert. Again, simple, effective. It can be done, you know, the morning, that morning or the night before. So you haven't got any, you know, worry about prepping anything. Um, Again, starter, probably something similar that can be prepared before. Maybe a salmon tartare uh, soup. Um, it's, It's just basically dishes that are effective 
and impressive, but are designed to take as much pressure off you um, at the time. You don't want to overcomplicate it, do you, really? You want something simple done well, something that shows technique. Because that's one thing I find with like this program. They go, oh, there's not enough technique on this one. Oh, and they, I love it. You go on TV automatically, you're flipping Gordon Ramsay. I'm like, get a grip, come on. You don't even have enough lines on your forehead. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I think I was watching it with Scott once, and uh, I think I, I think it was like on one of our vlogs. I went, oh yes, the pr- pr- presentation was nice, but the vegetables were bland. I was like, oh, fuck off, go sit in the corner, <laughs> I was like, and put that stupid cone hat on. I was like, you're a fucking dunce. He just danced with a chicken for like most of the time when he was prepping. I was like, oh, okay. God help his wife. <clears throat> That's about hmm. it. Like I say, there's some weirdos. They, some people like kind of automatically stick quirks on and then things because they try to make it as bonkers as possible, don't they? Like uh, you get like a sore loser once everyone's revealed. They go, oh, you put me forth. You put me forth. It's a bloody food with shit. Deal with it. <laughs> Just because it's nice to, for you doesn't mean it's going to be nice for everyone else. <laughs> yeah. It's like you're trying to put a legislation on food next. I was like, no, it needs to be bland and horrible just like everybody else's. What would you choose? Well, first uh, starter, I'd, I'm going to steal off your dad, right? Because uh, one of the first starters he gave me was a, a garlic and cauliflower soup. Oh. Yeah. I do. I love the flavour on that one. And it was so light and creamy. And that's one thing. I, so I'd definitely do that. I'd probably go more Italian, right? So I'd definitely do a take on spaghetti meatballs. But I use tagliatelle instead of spaghetti. So I do that, get some granite potato cheese on there, some fresh parsley, homemade cheesy garlic bread. I'd, uh, I'd do that way. And for dessert, I'd probably go tiramisu. Ah, tiramisu. I do like tiramisu. When I go Italian, I have to order Italian dessert. That's one thing I'm jealous about the Americans, because they've got a lot of Italian heritage, and they've got so many different desserts as well. I'm like... I, like you hear about cannoli, I'm like, I never tried a cannoli. What's it taste like? What's it? What is it? What is it? Come on, spill the beans. Just play Dean Martin music like on a loop, just to annoy people. <laughs> Taxi. <laughs> oh, laddie, whoa. I think we should do a come dine with me, like um, with with each other, really. And it's like uh, you you and Jeanette can be the Master Chef judges. Like, a, mm, yes, the season is nice. The presentation's good. Yes, uh, and ah, oh, well. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry about that. <laughs> so I think I'm quite... But uh, yeah, I mean, I'd be, it'd be interesting to do uh, something like that. Perhaps we'd grab a couple of others as well. We could just have, oh. you know, four of us. Well, yeah. I don't know what the prize would be, though. Prize would probably be more food. <laughs> <laughs> you just eaten this huge banquet, now you just get more. It's like, ah. That's one <laughs> thing I like about the Islam culture, Eid, right? Because I think you go over a friend's house and they keep feeding you food... And you're not allowed to say no. So they give you all these like rich in flavour foods and you can't say no to them. Like even when you fall, you're just like <laughs> that's it. That that suit you'd under the ground, it'd be like all you can eat. <laughs> How did you get kicked out of uh, all you can eat, Lawrence? Well <laughs> I I believe it was a uh, Cosmos on the Triangle of Bristol. I, I don't think I ate a uh... You know, particularly excessive amount, but I'd uh, yeah, got it for a few rounds of main dishes, and I just I was on my second plate of dessert, I think. And a certain old Chinese man came up to me, and uh, he said, "Ah, you 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 please no more." And I said, "Well, well what do you mean you please no more? It's uh, it's an all you can eat, right?" So, and uh, he says, "All you can eat means you come, you eat, you go. It no means you stay here all fucking day." I thought, the cheek of it, we'd only been there for about an hour and a half. Um, and I was only my second player dessert. I mean, I, I'm, I'm now, I'm probably the reason they now have time limits. <laughs> it's probably me. <laughs> but uh, obviously he decided I was so detrimental to his, uh, his revenue. So, um, yeah. So from that point, I was going, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure it's, you know, not fair. Anymore. I'm sure if I went back now, no one would know anything about it. It may have even changed and and probably change staff no one would recognise me but yeah I was officially kicked out of it all you can eat <laughs> swear blind you were trying to put you out of business like it was like 
<laughs> yeah. Like that guy in the Monty Python sketch who's like huge. <laughs> it was like, no, not finished yet. <laughs> oh, you mean Mr. Crieso? Yeah. And then from... he's, he's finally sir, a wafer thin mint. And he <laughs> says, oh, no, got it over the ass. I'm stuffy. And he says, oh, go on, just a little thing. And he goes, all right. Then. And he has the mint. He just explodes everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> there's just like food and guts and innards just sprayed all over the restaurant <laughs> as long as you're not eating watching this part then you'll be fine <laughs> hey thank you so much for listening in guys thank you so much for listening in i release videos every wednesday so you do not want to miss it make sure you hit that like hit subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future content <laughs> any <laughs> any parting words lawrence um, no, no, not really. Just uh, say uh, thank you very much for having me. Um, pleasure speaking to you. Um, and yeah, hopefully be in contact with you very soon. Yeah. So it's a goodbye from me and a goodbye from Lawrence. Goodbye from me. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you and good day, guys. <laughs>